appreciate having you here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and joining me as I set up my new orchids from a cairn, the ones that I can address immediately. And this would be the Vandoglossum Alexandra, named not after my daughter, but because of the name and the beautiful little pink and white kind of vandacious flowers in combination with a Holcoglossum. That is why I am so thrilled to have this orchid, because finally I have one that resembles my daughter's name. Now, she saw the orchid, she approved of the blooms. Now that I have her, I didn't want to say anything beforehand because I didn't know whether I was going to get this orchid from Tokyo World Mark and a Kern Orchids in Belgium. But when I showed her and I showed her the blooms, she approved, which is awesome. Thankful for that. <laughs> You know, dendrobiums have a lot of Alexandre in them, and I have one that is a cross with Alexandra. But the blooms are so weird, alien, and funky looking, and my daughter is not weird, alien, or funky in the aspect of, let's say, appearance. <laughs> she is weird, funky, and alien in other aspects, but certainly not appearance. This orchid resembles, reflects her, perfectly so i'm very very pleased to say that i have an additional orchid top here from back in the day from your giving me thanks and i'm going to use that for this alexandre i'm also going to tackle my podangus dactylothera so it's off the screen over there that's going into a bathroom soap dish because i don't have a small orchid top anymore but i'm also going to update you afterwards why i believe that third time Podangus Dactylotheris 3.0 will be fine in that soap dish because I'm going to show you how the candidates from Afri Orchids are doing and I'm going to show you how a Jomelia is doing in that soap dish. It's amazing. So first of all we're going to take care of Vandoglossum Alexandra. She said to me it's spelled with a K. I'm like yes that's what orchid naming people do. They take a name and they fudge a little bit, but don't worry, Alexandra, if you don't look at the name, it's you, period. Anyway, so yeah, I still have some bark attached to the roots, and I'm not going to fuss with that bark at all, because it is going to go into a beautiful, light, airy mix of just lava rock. That means that even if this bark were to degrade, which... <laughs> It's going to take a long time because the quality of the bark even is pristine. It's amazing. It won't affect the health and the climate of the pot. So that's one out of it. Oh, and there's something else I want to point out. I love this system from Akaren Orchids. To staple the tag into the pot while it's at the nursery. So imagine if the public comes in and they want to choose orchids, the tag is maybe tucked into the pot quite deep. They can't see the name, so they take the tag out and then they read it and then flimsily or not correctly put it back. The tag gets lost. And it's possible that from all that little mishaps and stuff that the nursery then doesn't know which tag goes where based on the fact that the public take out the tags, read the names, and then either put it back into a wrong pot or don't put it back because they don't want to maneuver and fandangle the tag. I love this system of stapling the tag to the pot and you can still read what is on it. Perfect. Right, let's have a look at the Podangus. There she is, beauty. Let's make sure that we don't, there we go, release. So she is also going to go into a similar setup with lava rock, but in a soap dish. A snazzy, snazzy soap dish. So this is coming off relatively easily. Again, I'm not going to fuss with roots that are attached to bark. If it comes off just by a little bit of a jiggle and a poke, then that's gonna come off. Other than that, no. We won't worry about it too much. So that's all there is to it with my Podangas dactylotheras. Let's get rid of this because we are going to have to get another bigger bowl 
because we're going to do the submerged in water potting up method to protect all the roots that are on these orchids. Orchid top method of potting up, they instruct us that the roots must reach the bottom of the pot because it is a semi-hydroponic form of growing. But as you can see, my roots are not long enough and well, I don't want my orchid that deep. So I'm just going to fudge it a little bit and bring her up to a normal natural height in the pot, maybe a tad lower, just to keep the humidity around the roots adequate enough in my very dry climate where my humidity is approximately 30% average year round. But you see, if I were now just to pour lava rock over the roots, the weight of the lava rock would damage the velamen. So in doing this with water, the lava rock becomes somewhat buoyant and it won't bash the velamen of the roots. Even though lava rock is heavier than leka, at least this is a much, much more gentler way of getting an orchid established in a pot without bruising the velamen. One down, one to go. So simple, but so effective. And I know she's gonna be happy in this. And this is my snazzy soap dish. You see, normally you would put the little suckers here, stick it on the wall of your bathroom, and then you have your accessories, soap, or whatever it is in this little dish. And I think it is perfect. It has always been my go-to for something local. Lots of aeration. But what I did do many, many moons ago is I super glued the drainage holes on the bottom of the pot because again, in my dry climate, I do want to try to maintain as much humidity in the pot for the hot months of the year. So I did cancel out the drainage holes. We'll do the same thing with my Podangus dactoliceras. My Jomelia is doing amazing. And because these are finer roots, they're not as substantial as what we just saw with the Vandoglossum. I'm going down a size of lecker from the large that I previously used to a medium. And I'm going to consider the orchid top principle of potting up, getting the roots in and down, and then I'm going to fill up with lecker. Now I have to be very, very careful with this root tip right here. And I have one extending out over there, which I don't want to bend into position. We'll see what this one does. However, I want to make sure that maybe this one here will find its way into the lava rock. What did I do wrong the first time with my Dactoliceras? Gabriella Carson, her YouTube channel, I will uh, link below, has a Dactoliceras as well, and she has hers mounted, which is perfect, foolproof growing method for Podangus Dactoliceras, but I don't have the humidity. So the first time around, I put my first Podangus into Ceramis far too wet. Maybe the orchid was far too small. I don't know. The fact that this orchid is triple the size of what I had before, I am not going to risk ceramis around this orchid anymore. I want to really make three times a charm, make it work and make her happy. The second time I had a bigger orchid and I put her into ceramis self-watering mixed with leka, and she did bloom. She did well for a season. But then I guess I've got to watch a little root going already outside there. I do want you inside for the time being. So let me just pause my thought there and put her back in. So she did well for a season, I guess. But because of my dry top layer, I was constantly misting. And this looks like a substantial little orchid, but the texture of the leaves is more succulent. So that didn't work. Eventually the misting got too much. I miscalculated everything, the balance, the ratio, everything. So now all I'm going to do, no self-watering, no nothing, but this is like the high humidity version of the mounting that I see how well Gabriella Carson's is doing. So I'm going to give my Podangus the humidity she needs by using lava rock 
without using any constant water around her roots like I did the last two times. And I'm hoping that with this balance, it will work because if I don't mist her, but want to just do submerged soaking for watering, I can do that without risking the base of the orchid, which currently you see is underwater, but I've got gorgeous temperatures at the moment. It is still 28 degrees. I've got a light breeze going. It's early enough in the day, so I'm not concerned about the fact that the base of this orchid is submerged. She will dry out with plenty of time, especially when I show you where she's going to live for at least another 24 hours. And then I'm just going to have to see about the temperatures if I am comfortable with her outside or if I want to baby her a little bit. High humidity, warm to hot grower. Yeah, I can do that for eight months of the year. And then we have to find the balance of how often to water and when to leave her alone. Let's get the tag in. There we go. That is my Podangus, Dactoliceras, potted up. And yeah, she does appear loose. So I'm going to find a big lava rock and support her at the base here. So after a month or so, my Sietorkis there on the left is doing well. And you can see the root that came off the mount that was sticking out. It is curving down and into the lava rock. I love that. That is the dynamic I was hoping for. Bring it on. That root tip right there on the rock is doing well. It's healthy. There is no decline at all. My little Vanda Pomilla 2.0 is also doing quite well. The root tips that you see that are going brown, there's two factors here. They are exposed to quite a bit of breeze. The humidity has dropped a little bit and they are exposed to a lot more light than where they were before. So they're going a little bit maroon. That could be just the light or it could be they're going to stop growing because of lack of humidity from where they are at the moment in the pot. But when you look at the root down here, it's having the same dynamic. So I'm just going to conclude that they are just going to dry up because of the location in and around the pot. They're not getting enough humidity. But when you look inside, the roots are doing fabulous in there. I don't see a decline at all regarding how the roots are performing when they are in the media. That is awesome. They green up beautifully. When I spray around the perimeter of the pot, I'm not touching the base of the orchid, not this time of year, just the perimeter of the pot and they green up beautifully. So she is doing really well. I'm pleased, very happy. Even the center leaf is starting to extend a little bit further. Awesome. This is my Jumelia. Excuse the dust. That is the nature of the game here, growing outdoors. But look at this. When she arrived, she was just here, tiny little orchid, and I put her into my soap dish. And look at this little monster growth. Going nuts, absolutely going nuts. So this is why I'm putting my Podangus dactyloceras into the soap dish because I can see that this orchid is loving and living its best life. Look at that, all those little plantlets growing. And now it's really go time. She is really bulking up in size, which is absolutely amazing. I love, I love seeing this. So from an orchid top, let's say a small orchid top here in Europe costs about 10 euros, including the saucer, not shipping included, but the saucer and the pot, the small, this is a medium, but a small orchid top is about 10 euros. This here is one euro 50, and it gives me the same result. And that is why I am confident that this setup for my Podangus will work. It won't get choked out and it won't be always in water like I had it previously. So that is why I'm banking that 3.0 will be absolutely fine. Now for the time being, she is going to stay outside. My Vanderglossum Alexandra will stay outside. Doesn't matter until the temperatures drop, but I may bring her in if the breeze gets too strong because she is a bit wobbly in the pot and I don't want those root tips to be anywhere near any abrasive material. So if the breeze picks up, she's going inside. Temperature wise, it wouldn't be necessary. 
just because of the breeze. So yeah, the quick update on the ones that are doing well and why I am repeating what I'm doing now with the two newcomers from Akern and Tokyo World Mark. Hope you enjoyed this from here on in. We will follow their progress and hopefully everything, everything is going to be, they're doing great. <laughs> that is going to be my wish. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe and take care. Bye.